is the camera rolling too, Christopher? My camera's rolling. If you want this, this footage, I'll license it to you for a small fee. Insanity. <laughs> is it? Elizabeth is vlogging with her mom, but she's insisted <laughs> that I don't put a camera in her mom's face for the podcast. We're protecting my mom's anonymity, but if you want to see her face, come to my vlog. <laughs> No, I we're not. Water. I'm putting a camera on that woman. Don't you fucking dare, dude. She looks so beautiful today. She She's showed stunning. out for the podcast. She's stunning. And Hold she on. said it's all thrifted. I'm so sorry. I have not had a sip of water today. Chris, would you please hand me my water? Are you kidding me? You wait until we start I rolling to do that? I didn't realize until we started on screaming at each other that my throat my life. was dry. What do you think about Lizzie and I fighting every day on the podcast? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was nice. That was a good water. Do you want to introduce the show or should we talk about my horrible morning? Let's introduce the show. Then we can talk about both of our horrible mornings. You had a horrible morning too? I had a horrible morning too. Yay. <laughs> and it's a holiday. I just said, Lizzie called me and I was like, what do you want? And then I started feeling guilty about how rude I was in front of Lizzie's mom <laughs> on speakerphone in the car. And then I didn't even address her mom or say hello on speakerphone. It's incredibly rude. Because I was we like, it's up. a holiday. We shouldn't even be working. And then he's like, you know what? Save it for the pot. Don't even talk to me. And then he hung up on me and my mom went, Hi, Ryland. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you tell her what I texted you? No, of course I didn't. I texted her and said, I was so rude and I didn't even say hello to your mom. Will you please say hello? I said Ryland says hi. And now I've been spiraling about it the whole time. You could make it up to her. It's well, a holiday? It's, yeah. Chris is like, wait, why am I here? <laughs> Don't worry, Chris. We're getting time and a half today. It's President's <laughs> Day. So, like, oh. we do presidential things. So. That's why we're all wearing white. Mm -hmm. um, All right, you guys. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of The Sip. I'm Ryland Adams, of course, joined by Elizabeth Gordon, Elizabeth Gordon's mother. Good morning. And Christopher. Hello. Yay. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> well, let's talk about your bad morning first. W well, so I can determine if mine was worse or not. So if, if it's OK for me to talk about your ear ringing, is that all right? Sure. My mom has a, an incessant ringing in her ears. It's called tinnitus and it's awful. Oh. And uh, this morning I was like, fuck, do I have that? Because I was hearing an incessant like, ee, 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 ee. No, thing. there's just work being done in your neighborhood. Literally. I go outside and someone's cutting the fucking trees down in the neighbor's yard. I was like, oh, thank God. Because I was like, our, our refrigerator beeps like that. Our microwave beeps like that. Our fucking oven beeps like that. Our dishwasher beeps. So I was like, what is beeping? Okay, so now you can have some empathy for your mom who has to live with that No, at first I was like, this fucking bitch dropped down some hereditary ear ringing shit and I will never forgive her for it. Um, but thank God, they're just cutting the trees down in the neighborhood. And so did they wake you up at 6 a.m. or was it like... Like no, you the, were already awake. I was already awake because I've been sleeping on the couch for five days. Why? <gasps> oh, bless you. Bless bless you. you. COVID queen. So oh, my you. God. Does COVID come with sneezes now? I don't know. Is it the sneeze variant? I'm not, I don't know. Whatever. Well, that, there goes this episode with the COVID marks. <laughs> Bleep it. <laughs> I don't even remember what I don't what even think saying. it does anything at this point, but like on the podcast apps, it will say like, misinformed information about COVID-19 and I'm like we can't even say the word <laughs> I have to flag our entire podcast for everything the world's then. ending and we're worried about well no I know people die from COVID let's move on oh no you might want to come oh, no. on now we're drowning in this <laughs> and we can't I've had a bad day okay yeah and then when we got in the car to leave there's a fucking car accident immediately on my road and I was like okay so I like turn around and go around the block and come back out onto the street and then there's another huge car accident that's just blocking off all of Burbank. Worst day for those people, quite honestly. Oh, you're right. We should think about the victims. <laughs> <laughs> so for everyone's 20 okay. minutes, these people with their car accidents derailed my day. And because it's a holiday, she still showed up on time because there's no traffic in Actually, Los Angeles. Actually, I wanted to say like, there was it wasn't no traffic. There oh. were people on the roads. People are going to work today. I don't think everybody has today off. Crazy. You're crazy. Yeah, look at us here working. I know. <laughs> look at us holding the workload on our back. Ugh. Uh, I woke up. My fucking cat. This which I, one? Louis. Louis. <gasps> Cheeto is a dream cat. Cheeto is wonderful. Like yes, Chris we had is our nodding in the like beginning. Louis has hurt his feelings. <laughs> <laughs> but that cat has decided it doesn't like the litter box. And I'm like, oh, maybe it's because it's not with two cats. Maybe it's because it gets fuller faster and this cat just like prefers a like- A clean slate. A clean slate to do anything. But now I'm in there every day, twice a day, making sure there's nothing in that. And this cat is still choosing the most expensive rug in our house to pee on. Ooh, and shit. I've learned my lesson. Like I don't buy expensive rugs because yeah. I have five animals and I know that's like a whoop-de-doo. <sighs> 
Oh, he keeps peeing. <laughs> Isn't that good thing? In like, what same... do you do? <laughs> Not when I wake up to another pee stain in the same spot that I had carpet cleaned for an hour yesterday. My God. <sighs> Kick Louie's ass back out into the street. And so while I'm cleaning that... Riley's in the backyard. And then I'm like, weird, where is she? Riley, where are you? I can't find that girl. Yeah. So I run up the mountain. She's fucking licking a mouse. A live one? I think she licked it to death. <laughs> there were no bite marks. She licked it to death. I hope and then she was laying dead. right next to it. That's kind of sweet. And I'm like, this is disgusting. Was, did you let her keep it? So No. Oh. I tore her away from it. And then I took a shovel out in my backyard and threw it across the fence. Oh, my God. So that a rattlesnake or something will get it. Because I've learned it's rattlesnake season. R.I.P. to a real rodent. What? I'm just saying You're worried about the mouse. rodent? He was, it sounds like he was a He was trying to Riley's. get into my house. And Riley was protecting me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We also have a guest dog who keeps pissing everywhere in our house, and I think it's because Joe and James aren't home, so he doesn't feel safe. No, he can smell Icky's piss from the last six months of life. No, and he's it's pissing different. Like, Wolfie's oh. been at our house before, and he's never been like this, but Joe and James are gone, so Icky is trying to protect us from Wolfie, and so he just keeps being like, bark, 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 and then Wolfie's like, ah. And then he just pisses everywhere. So Wolfie is Bubs? Wolfie is a lot like Bubs. Okay. Yeah. Because the impersonation. And Bubs is the best dog in this situation. Bubs is being so chill. Wow, that is shocking. Yeah, it, Bubs is chill until Icky bites off a bit too much to chew. And then Bubs has to step in because they're like part of the same pack. So he's like, I don't want to do this, Wolfie. But this fucking idiot started something and I've got to help him finish it because we're boys. It's complicated. Hmm. <laughs> dog politics so then i throw the rat over the fence yeah <laughs> and i finally sit down and i'm like oh my gosh i already woke up late i haven't produced this podcast everyone's showing up in a half an hour i'm like but if i don't meditate i'm gonna kill somebody today yeah. so i sit down i'm like oh, i gotta meditate my fucking doorbell starts ringing oh, another god. roofing guy i thought the roof was done i signed like this roof is done and there's a fucking roofer at my door oh my god i situate him i sit back down another doorbell ring mm -hmm. and i'm just like <laughs> I'm going to lose my mind. Yeah. I'm going to lose it. Yeah. I'm going to fucking fly through outer space and lose my mind. Yeah. So I haven't produced the show. I don't know what I we're did. talking about. I saw that. I haven't read the articles. That's okay. Okay. So you're well informed? I'll tell you about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to talk about our birthday party or your val I think the birthday party leads into our Valentine's Day. Yeah. So we we celebrated our birthday on February 13th. <laughs> it was honestly the best day of our lives. It was so fun. We were like reckless girls. We blacked out and $3,000 later, we had to run out of the mall. <laughs> We were so unhinged well, because I kept we telling all, you, we were like, out of control. Shane kept getting me gifts for Valentine's Day. And so, I was like, we've got to live up to something. Yeah. And Lizzie was like, well, I should do something sweet, too. So she joined me at the mall. And, well, we started at the Nimi's Cafe, which is like... Brilliant cafe to start at, oh by the gosh. way. Those, they brought us chicken broth. I've never been at a restaurant that serves chicken broth like bread. And egg oh. rolls? No, nah, egg rolls not the right word no, for it. It's a roll that it's was made bread roll, with It's a bread roll, but it's not bread. It's I'll put egg. in the picture. It's, it's like, like a big fluffy egg. I wonder what they're thing. called. What is that called, Mom? And they served it with strawberry butter. It was delish. And this was before we even ordered any food. We ordered nothing at that point. Oh what is gosh. that thing called? You should know. Is it mainly bread? It's not, it's I think it's made with like cornstarch and egg and mm. it's like super blended and it's really soft. Like a matzo? No. Like um I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I the, give up. It, mm, it was so good. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> and then that just like started our spending recklessness, and we were just going in all I the was, stores, I swiping was, all the cards. What? I was hella chill no, for the you longest. Weren't. No, no, you weren't. No, I was hella chill for you the longest. You dropped three hundred dollars on a puffer. <laughs> <gasps> I needed it. <laughs> she needed it. In I Southern needed that California puffer. Where it's 70 degrees every day. And then day. I was like, well, I guess I should. No, it was freezing as fucking. Are you returning half of your clothes? I'm returning the pants. Because mm. I put the pants on in the, what's it called? Dressing room. Mm -hmm. And I came out and I was like, I feel like Magic Mike. And then I got home and I realized like, do I want to feel like Magic Mike? <laughs> like Did as a woman. Did you go see that without me? No. <laughs> You did? No, we didn't. She's just trying. To, we didn't. We I've didn't. seen the first one. There's three now. There's a third one in theaters, and he. Wa I want to go see it, and he kind of. Okay. Well, was, he's flirting with the idea of seeing it with me. <laughs> he's not ready to commit to seeing it, but we'll get there. So yeah, we can see it. You're not really muted. You, we can hear anything you say, mom. <laughs> If yeah, you, if you ever need to chime in or correct you just, a you fact, you say whatever you want to say. She's you, over here mouthing the words like, "I wish I had a camera on that beautiful face," but the daughter over here is like controlling. Thank if you, you. want to do angles, bro, you do angles. 
Okay, finish your story. Sorry, I'm just, my mom is very pretty, so I'm giving you a little Thank bit of you. coverage. Oh, and she said everything was thrifted. A thrift yes, queen. She's everything. a thrifty. Except my shoes. And she, what's your preferred thrift store? I won't mention where I got my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> what's your, starts with a C. What's your preferred thrift store? I like the hospice thrift a lot. What is that? Yeah, um, we have thrifts where I live where, you know, they're like nice thrifts. Right. From people in hospice? Yes. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> no. Is from, that really no, what they're no, giving their... No, no, no. The money goes to hospice. Oh. Okay, An important so we, clarification. We have animal shelter thrifts also. Wow. Um, love that. I do love that. Who can't hear who? Oh, well, you wanted to see oh, me. Oh, no. She was recording you, but oh, covering okay. her face. And I was like, you who need to... Who wants to see me? They see me every week. I'm <laughs> sure they want to see you. Unless they're sick of you. Have you been I reading was... comments? No. I was gonna. I was thinking the other day, it's like, why do I care anymore? <laughs> like, because I want to get one of those laser facials where your skin turns brown and then you have to have it medically peeled off. Because it takes like 10 years off your face. And I really want to do it. But then I was like, oh, but I have the podcast. And it's like, would you guys care? No. If I came in here molting for a few weeks, <laughs> I would molting <care>. and raw. <laughs> Don't do it. I think I'm going to do it. Don't do it. I think it'd be really funny too. <laughs> like a little lizard Liz. <laughs> you wouldn't love that. Anyway, so it was our birthday. Yeah, so we just kept saying it felt like our birthday because we were having so much fun at the mall. Like, yeah. we were two girls that couldn't be stopped. We were taking on the world. And then and we got like, to Gucci. So giddy. Oh, no. Yeah. I was good in Gucci, though. There was a moment of, like, blackout where I was like, <gasps> and then I was like, no, I can't. And then I got Joe a little wallet, and I have to return it. He doesn't like it? He hates it. He hates the whole concept. Right. Yeah. Oh. Sad. Okay. But I did lose my wallet, so I might just keep it for me. Stop it. Are you kidding me? We all know I, I bought know, it myself I in the wallet. first place. <laughs> oh, wait, are you keeping it? You're not I returning might. it? I might return it. I might keep it. I don't know. I might exchange it for something that's more ladylike. Okay. Or will I? I don't know. I'm wearing like men's t-shirt so right now. So take us into your Valentine's Day. So picture this. It's Tuesday, February 14th. I wake up pleasantly in the arms of Mr. Bubba's, snuggled by Icarus ridiculous joe nowhere to be found who is joe <laughs> <laughs> uh joe and i got on a flight to san francisco and we went to san francisco for two days and just fucked around wow it was really fun we went to the aquarium we went to multiple aquariums actually and we're not really aquarium people but like i guess we are now and i learned honestly i haven't been like cool with stingrays for like a minute because of what they did to my boy steve you know what i'm saying never forget wait <laughs> am i do i know what happened to steve <laughs> Do you know who Steve Irwin is? Oh, oh my gosh. Is that how he died? Yeah, he got barbed in the heart by a fucking stingray. Big one. How is anybody going in the ocean? Well, that's <laughs> great fucking question. Because those are just sitting on the surf floor, right? Like yeah. in where we're surfing. Yeah. That's why I went surfing once and I probably won't go ever again. I don't, I, I get, people love it and I just feel like, Ugh. I mean, it was very fun, but. Very dangerous. The, the fear risk of factor. the stingrays is just crippling. And now they're like seeing all these sharks, these sharks. Not the sharks. <laughs> all the sharks, even in Malibu and Santa yeah. Monica. And I'm like, I don't, I, I think I want to keep my limbs intact. Yeah, I'm good on that dog. Um, so we, okay. when, when I'd seen the stingrays, I was like, fuck you for what you did to Steve. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Never mm -hmm. forget. Mm -hmm. Like, honestly. Honestly, some people be out in these streets forgetting and like I have not. Right. No. OK. And then we went to this little like tide pool area where like kids are allowed to like pet things and there were like stingrays in it. And I was like, this is risky. <laughs> and, can they take the sting away from the ray? No. They always got the little barb, the barb. Uh, and children are petting these? Yeah. But they were little. You know what I mean? They're like this big. And then I realized like these things are really playful. And like their heads when they poke up out of water kind of look like little mm. Frenchie heads. And they literally like they want to socialize with you. They're little, little, well, they have these little side thingies. <laughs> they're like an odd shape, right? They, so their little side is they're just, they like, they come up out of the water and their little weird side just does a little, a little, hey, a little wave. And they like come up to you and like, uh, cause I, I'm not putting my hand deep into like something cause it's as deep as like my forearm. Mm -hmm. So I'm just touching the surface and the little, the little guys are just like, Hey, like just wiggles his little head up onto my hand. And I was like, do I fucking love a stingray? I love a stingray. I loved it so much. I was like, do I need a little stuffy? Do I need to bring home a fake stingray? And then have you ever seen one dried? Uh, no. 
Why would I be in a position to see a dried? <laughs> they, they're fucking aliens, bro. Chris, can you Google dried stingray? And so uh, I can show you. Do they ever sting unprovoked? Because I know like when you're when people surf and they get stung, it's it's most of the time because they step on one because you can't you, see it. What are you trying to say that Steve got barbed because he was no, asking for I'm it? I'm not talking about Steve. You think it's because he was wearing about, those sexy short shorts dressed like that, he got barbed? With that Australian accent. Are you ready? Yeah. <gasps> Oh my right? god, an alien? Are you kidding me? That's a me? dried stinger. I show my mom. What? That's did they put a face on that thing? God. No, that's it. Will you screenshot that so we can put it in the episode? Yeah, yeah it's fucking horrifying. What? Yeah. I don't like them anymore. <laughs> no, I think they're still cute. That shit is gonna be like The Last of Us and in- implant itself inside of our body and take over the world. I don't know. Hmm. Seems like we're all working together when we're full of that fungus. Towards a common goal. Connected, unified. Why are you sleeping on the couch? Because my mom's in my room. Oh, but you said even when Joe was there. Or no? No. Okay. Yeah. Shane hasn't been sleeping in our bedroom either. He's in his office. Can you imagine? I mean, are you low-key loving it? (laughs) 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 You look a little bit like you're low-key loving it. Well, no, because when they were doing our roof in sections, and so the last section was over our bedroom. Yeah. And so he had been, and he sleeps late. Like, I wake up before the roofers start, and he's still, that's like his sleeping hours. So he's been sleeping in the other room. And I'm like, of course, we get married, and you go and sleep on the other side of the house. (laughs) Shouldn't he be coming back if the job is done? Uh, yeah, you would think so, huh? Ooh. No, he did. He did. <laughs> uh, one night he felt like, I don't know, he got like some sort of like food. Shane always is getting like some yeah. sort of stomach bug. It might be the talkies. He fell asleep <laughs> on the couch. And I was like, wow, even after the roofers are gone, you're just keeping this a pattern. I see what's going on. Oh. We're fine. Oh, you're fine. We're fine. How was your V-Day, B-Bay? It was great. We stayed home because I just, I feel like on Valentine's Day in general, if you don't oh, book a streets. reservation so far in advance, you're never going to get somewhere. And even when you do go somewhere, the service sucks because not because of the servers themselves, but because they're so overwhelmed because yeah. it's so busy that we just, you know, had a cheat day. Cause you know, I'm on my health journey again. Ugh. So I had stop rolling your eyes <laughs> Good at for me. You. you are too. Yeah. You're always out there at your orange theory. Yeah. And we ordered mission burrito. Mm. Have you What's had Mission that, Burrito? Chris? Oh my gosh. You need to run there right after the show. Okay. Is it on the it's way home? So yes, good. Please. Mm. Is it on the way home? You got to get the bean and cheese burrito. Normally, I'm not just like a bean and cheese burrito girly. Yeah. But you get that with their combination the rice and beans. What's it called? Mm. Mission? The chips. Yeah. Mission Burrito. I'll take you there. It's real good. Mm. 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 So you got burritos. He got me a really cute cake. I saw I'll the cake. A photo. Yeah. And these flowers that are still looking good a week later. Beautiful. Yeah. Stunning. Stunning. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous girls. And then, of course, the one time Elizabeth, not the one time, you're always ditching me when you're going hiking, which is very rude. I invited you fucking no, you five didn't. times. I didn't. No, first yeah. of all, I thought Bitch, you were doing Griffith. I texted you. This was no. with the stranger from. No. no. Uh, yeah, okay, you're right. This You're is right. the stranger. We were gonna hike going to hike to the Hollywood Griffith. sign and I was gonna vlog it with this guy that I met at that showcase I did. Okay. Nobody ever gave me a tape. Nobody asked me to join this party. And then Lizzie calls I me. I did. Of I said, do you want to come it. with me? But I'm gonna vlog it. It's Saturday morning. I deny her call because I'm watching my new favorite show on Apple TV Plus, <laughs> Shrinking. So good. <laughs> you like that show too, mom? You're yes. watching? Have you finished? No, I've just seen two. Okay. Just I, two. I watched four. Oh. I love it. I just, I love it. It's pretty it. cute with Jason Siegel and, yeah. and what's his Harrison name? Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford. I served Harrison Ford juice after he got in that tiny little plane accident at the Santa Monica airport. How was no he doing? Way. He seemed good. He had a little cut on his snoot. <laughs> I am hot for Harrison Ford. <laughs> I have to say. he. I really like all the like, characters. Like daddy. The comedy for me hits. It's very like uh, mom. Yeah. Like they're making jokes about next door and like I'm laughing at that, of course. Yeah. Um, but I do love it. They're like therapists who are like facing their own trauma. It's just like so I like saw... the interpersonal relationships are so good for me, but it's also like this glossy perfect show. Yeah. I love a TV kitchen set. You know? I love the opening scene where he's in the pool with the girls. Oh yeah. I saw <laughs> the opening. downplay it. <laughs> And then he realizes, like, he's like, these are bad. my friends. <laughs> and then he doesn't know their names. He's like, they're, and they're whores. Like, I could <laughs> honestly live inside this world forever. Like, I'm going to be so sad when I finish the season. And I'm campaigning for all of you to watch it so that it gets a season two. Because I don't know if I can live without the show anymore. I'll watch it. It's so cute. Yeah. I did want to circle back on Ginny and Georgia. Did you watch it? I try. I mean, I, I don't Whatever, think it's, it's not for you. No, 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 no. I think it's good. I just, I'm very curious of the audience because it's still like the number one show on Netflix. But when I'm watching it, I'm like, is this for moms? Is this for teenagers? Like, what's the demographic? I think it's for 30 something year old moms. Really? Yeah. As a 30 something. 
There is none. Don't get my the mom started. The answer is none. <clears throat> the, the, the limit does not exist. I mean, apparently, no. I just had never heard of it except for from you. Yeah. But apparently it's like this hugely watched show. Yeah. And I'm just like, well, who's watching it if I've never heard about it? But apparently everyone. Yeah. I okay, but I didn't like it. I millennials, like it. zillennials. What moms. is it about a TV kitchen set that's just so great? I don't know. I think it's because it's like they can just spend all this time in that one set. Mm. And they like really they trick it out. I've been on a few really nice fucking kitchen sets. Some that don't have fourth walls. Some that do have mm -hmm. fourth walls. It's fucking cool. The colors are just so rich and vibrant. Yeah. What were we talking? Oh, your no hike. idea. Your hike. Oh, you're upset. Oh. You didn't get to go on this hike. And then I fucking called you on the hike. I deny because I'm watching my new show. So we we get to Fryman Canyon in the valley. I'm filming. Oh, you're I'm really gonna say exactly where he goes hiking? I've never seen him there before. Oh, okay. I've been there for fucking eight years. I've never seen this motherfucker there. Okay. This guy walks by with an inner light so bright that I'm like, <gasps> and then I go, <laughs> that's fucking Sean Mendez. And like, to be honest, I know nothing of this guy. I even forgot about Stitches, but it's the only song I know. Like I've seen Sean Mendez because he opened for Taylor Swift like 95 years ago. But this kid walks by and he's just like, <laughs> smiling by himself, walking to the fucking like parking lot. And I was like, oh my God. And then I call you to be like, fucking Sean Mendez is there. Doesn't answer. We walk up the trail. I'm with this other guy, that guy, Patrick. Doesn't know who the fuck Sean Mendez is. He's lying. Did no. you start singing him? A no, song? he's not lying. There's nobody. No, he I mean, literally didn't know who Sean Mendez was. Were you like? Did I you know, Mom? No, Mom. I know who he is from you. Right. Right. From your show. I'll be needing <laughs> stitches. Yeah. Okay, anyway, right. we get it. You know, singing is one of our strong so suits, about right? You bitch. <laughs> my mother has paid for my vocal lessons. Have you? Yeah. You should go re demand a I refund. Paid for everything. <laughs> Anyway, I want my money back. You <laughs> should call Bruce because he overcharged and he overpromised. Which you is know what the I'm title saying? of my new Bruce book. Bruce Sean Mendes! So we're on the trail and I'm like tripping. I'm like, this motherfucker. And like, you didn't answer. And I was like starting to call you names. And this guy, Patrick, who I don't know, was like, I felt him getting uncomfortable. And I was like, it's okay. He knows what he is. And then fucking from behind, Sean What are you doing, passes. gay slurs? I'm not going to admit to that okay. on here. Okay. There, the, Sean comes behind me up the trail and there he is and then the motherfucker took his shirt off and then i noticed because i was like i'm it could not be him you know what i mean right so i was like a lot of fit boys in yeah. hollywood so i started texting rylan and i'm like i need you to google all of sean mendez's <laughs> tattoos because i can't do it on friday and of course i'm the one for the child. i go i go look and see if he has one on the back of his tricep and he fucking does so we confirmed based off of tattoo technology <laughs> that that was actually the sean mendez he was literally fucking shirtless and i was like liz are you sure because like is Sean totally alone. Never, it was absolutely I, Sean. I was like, it couldn't be. No, it and, wasn't. But like because nobody, you said the and nobody else was talking about it. And then two people came down. And they're like, I think it was. I overheard them talking. And I want to be like, I have confirmed <laughs> with my friend Ryland Adams. You might also know him <laughs> from such things as the Sit Podcast or Ryland's Vlogs. <laughs> no, but I was like. You're wrong. He would never go hike. This man went hiking alone. Not a friend. And was not looping. a bodyguard. He is like one of the most famous people. I've seen there. like Lucy Hale there. That's where I see Josh yeah, but, all like, the time. And then when friends. I was leaving, guess who fucking yesterday, guess who pulls up in his Tesla? Who? Jason Nash. Oh, well, yeah, that makes sense. Huge celebrity sightings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know who I saw when I was hiking in Malibu? Oh my God. I've also seen Nicole Richie there. Really? Yeah. And her husband. And well, he, yeah. does he have a twin brother? Yeah. Yeah, I saw her and her, their Benji husbands. and Joel. Yeah, they. Uh, well, most people live in that area. Oh my god, I've seen Wanda Sykes there too. Have you seen Hillary Duff there? I mean, there was another woman with them, and I was probably hiking without my glasses. It could have been Hillary. I was hiking in Malibu the other day, and I saw a uh, Camille Grammer from The Real Housewives of Beverly oh. Hills. Camille Grammer she's of the Kelsey Grammer. Hiking up, and she's like, "Hi," not she because she hi. knew me, but just because she's. Was because you were staring? No, because we were crossing a path. That's you guys took one your AirPods out and acknowledged each other's like, humanities and then put your AirPods hey. back in. And then I turned to Shan and said, To is who? That Camille? Oh, to Shane? To Shane. I thought you said Shan. And I was like, Who the fuck is Shan? <laughs> wow. So you didn't say anything to him. And I did not, but I did learn how cool. to spell his name. S H. Oh, yeah, because, yeah, you're it's, crazy. I spelled it on here S, -S E A N. It's S H A W N. Sean. Yeah, he demated. He, oh. demated. he dated Camila Cabello for a long time. Yeah, that doesn't mean I know how to spell his fucking name or Camilla <laughs> Cabello for that matter. Camila. I think it's Camilla, right? No, Camila. Oh. Camilla. But isn't Co that how know. you pronounce in. Is she Spanish speaking? Spanish. Camilla? Let me look. I think Cabrilla? she's Puerto Rican. I think. 
I don't watch know. her X Factor audition. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it will watch give me her X Factor audition. Watch the whole thing. No, no, I no, actually no, no, no. You scroll through Camilla, all the girls. Shh, 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 shh. I remember <laughs> Camila Cabello being on the James Corden show, and she said the only fucking reason she went on X, X Factor is because she was sure in her heart of hearts that she would get famous and marry Harry Styles. <laughs> her whole motivation for going on X Factor was to marry Harry Styles. The woman can sing. Like yeah, good for her. When our podcast was still at Spotify. When they were like announcing all their uh, Spotify original podcasts, yeah, uh, I was wearing a horrible outfit. Uh, their like guest performer there was Camila Cabello, and oh my gosh, can the girl sing? Oh, you went you went to an event? Yeah, like Got announcing it. the like Spotify the, uh, the originals of Spotify originals. Yeah, and then okay. days later we were dropped. <laughs> it was days, uh, like a month. Okay, I was gonna say because why didn't you invite me? I wonder. I probably wasn't on board yet. You weren't. No. No. That's why I needed to know when it was. Because mm-hmm. okay. you kept it from me for at least years now. <laughs> and I was going to well, say, I, can, uh, I could have been at Upfronts with Camilla Cabello. There's a Getty image. I'd love for you to roast uh, my look. Is it, are there. you wearing a Patagonia puffer? No, I'm and wearing. And some brown boots. Uh, I had just done the like shopping in the women's section only Wait. for a video. And so I was wearing How's this? a girl's. Very good. More femme. Okay, continue. Yeah. Um, I was wearing women's clothing from uh, Urban Outfitters. My pants are unzipped. I think it's Camila, by the way. Okay. I, I agree. Okay. Thank you very okay. much. Okay. Because it's 1L. Oh, it's 1L. Yeah. But I am right about the double L, right? Yes, because Cabello is two L's and that's why it's a yo. Ah, see? Yes. You see? Like and such. Uh, you? <laughs> <laughs> You're nasty. You're trying to fight, aren't You're you? You're nasty. You want to fight. <laughs> that just got your blood boiling. Should we it? kiss in front of your mom? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. I'm a married woman. <laughs> I know that my bra strap bringing out is probably antagonizing you. Today's podcast is sponsored by HelloFresh, who's here to help you eat better by delivering fresh ingredients and easy recipes right to your door, taking the hassle out of dinner time. No matter your lifestyle or your meal preferences, HelloFresh has recipes sure to please everyone at your table. From fit and wholesome to veggie or family friendly, you'll always find something even the pickiest of eaters will enjoy. You can customize select meals by swapping proteins or sides or even adding protein to a veggie dish and now you can upgrade for organic chicken or organic ground beef. The thing I love most about HelloFresh is I can guarantee that I have a delicious meal waiting for me that I don't have to think about on the busiest of work weeks. We also work with Green Chef who is now owned by HelloFresh and with a wider array of meal plans to choose from. There's definitely something for everyone. I love switching between the brands and now you can do the same thing at a discount with me. So go to HelloFresh.com slash the sip 65 and use code the sip 65 for 65 percent off plus free shipping that's hellofresh.com slash the sip 65 and use code the sip 65 for 65 percent off plus free shipping hellofresh america's number one meal kit okay <laughs> what about angler fish oh you really my go god fish? yes we have to go back to we fish we already did this like... i didn't even learn this at the aquarium by the way my friend Haley texted me like seven days ago and was like do you have a minute to talk and i was like are you okay like not really like are you okay but I'll I'll call you if you need me to talk she's like no it's okay I just want to tell you an animal fact and I fucking forgot about it last night I call this bitch because she's like we're it doesn't matter I call her and she goes can I tell you that animal fact now and I go okay dude she's like do you know what an angler fish is and I was like no I don't do you no an angler fish is that fish that lives in the deep down the deep dark down that has the light that comes off the end and lures its prey in with its light and then you realize that you've been lured right into its fucking mouth but scientists apparently have had a really hard time finding male anglerfish. Mm. That's a female anglerfish. The one with the light is the female. And they've never really found a male fish. They're like, how do these motherfuckers procreate? This does not add up. This is weird. Then science progresses. Research is done. Observations are made. Get Ma- to the punchline. I'm there. Angle- <laughs> male anglerfish suckle on to the tummy of the woman. And they strap on like a little fucking parasite and then slowly every part of their fishness starts to atrophy they lose their fucking eyes they lose their fucking fins they just disintegrate on the fucking base of this bitch so procreating means death for the man Uh uh-huh and like i guess they dissolve into the woman and that is how they make babies i'm probably wrong because Haley explained it to me very late at night, and I was like, text me that shit, because that is fucking wild. And what? you can't even read the text breakdown? Well, she was like, I, I have to send don't you the whole... Don't go finding it now. That's what I was going to say. She's like, I have to send you the whole article I read on. I was like, I don't, I can't read, Haley. <laughs> <laughs> that's why none of our hot, voice memo. That's why none of our hot topics are factual. <laughs> <laughs> we see the headline, and we're like, let's go with it. <laughs> Someone else has to read me the headlines. <laughs> Sad. Sad. But can you believe? I can't believe. Terrifying. Also... 
kind of an easy life for a male angler. Mm. You just swim about until you disintegrate on a bitch's belly. Does it hurt? Is it painful? I mean, do they have feelings? I don't know. Okay, well, and I feel bad saying they don't have feelings, but even if they did have feelings, like, I wonder if I care about a male angler's feelings. Yeah, no. <laughs> Female Hard. power. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what have you and your mom been doing? Having the house alone together? Oh, we saw a really good rom com. My mom is a rom com. Your place or mine? Aficionado. No, not your place or mine. Did you see that trash? We talked about this last week. I can't do this with you. And no, I have you a turn bad it off. memory. Okay. okay. Five year engagement. My mom's obsessed with, with five year engagement. She sits and is she that laughs. with Emma Roberts no. and the whole. Oh, okay. That's the Jason, Jason Siegel. Jason Siegel and Emily Blunt. And my mom literally has I to love stand Emily up. Blunt. You have to see it. You would love it. Honestly, Let me write this down. What's it called? Five, five year engagement. Five year engagement. Five year engagement. My mom stands five <laughs> fucking inches from the TV screen, which is 87 inches across. So I don't know what you're seeing. Love it. Well, a rom-com is my kind of movie. She like, laughs so no hard business. her face turns red. <laughs> well, okay. So it twisty. seems we have good, uh, we have similar tastes if we both are so in love with shrinking. So I'll give it a try. <laughs> She's been talking about and this he, movie for a decade. Wow. And he refers to it, actually. There's like a little crossover. Oh, no oh really? Accident, you know, all these movies he's in. Wow. He's like Getting Sarah Marshall. Five year engagement. I don't know what the other ones are. I've been sleeping <laughs> on Jason Siegel. I he's, love him. Oh, he's the great. one with Barbara Streisand. Huh? Which ones? <laughs> Where they're driving in a car and she's his mom. Huh? Huh? I forget what that's called. Um, I watched Ten Things I Hate About. I'm on this like old movie thing. Ten Things I Hate About You. Why don't they make movies like that anymore? <laughs> yeah, like why that, don't they? Legally Blonde. Like yeah. they don't make like that is the essential funny question. adult movies that are light-hearted but entertaining with a great like they don't do that anymore 10 things i hate about you is actually like what's it called mom when they take an old piece of work and they reboot it but it's like a remake the, no it's like a class it's a remake of a shakespeare play but it's not remake what's that word a ripoff no <laughs> whatever it was great it's a it's the shakespeare it's shakespeare's sh taming of the shrew yes okay. yes it is yeah and oh with julia well, stewart with julia is. stewart julia styles O is mm -hmm. othello and so you guys rewatched that movie that you're talking about? I saw it for the first time. It's great. Okay. I slept through the middle part and I still enjoyed the end. And how much longer do the two of you have together? Today and tomorrow. She's going to do the hours. Bachelor recap with me. Wow. Do you watch? No. Okay. But you don't have to watch the Bachelor recap to enjoy my recap. <laughs> well, no, that's <laughs> the not Bachelor what I'm saying. Show. I was just wondering if your mom watched. Um, okay, let's get into some hot topics. I don't know what changed with you last week, but you always hold the iPad. But last week, you're like dropping the iPad. Oh, it's because you can't my whole body was physically uncomfortable okay. and it was making me like I was going to fucking burst. With I was anxiety. like, nothing has changed. Well, it's like, I don't know. When you're What's going on? I'm stepping on it because I've. Just, <laughs> leave, let me live. I know, but I'm, I'm worried that you're going to mess things up for us. It's I feel like your concern for that is what's actually going to mess things up. And that is a life lesson in okay. and of itself. Let me make sure nobody's at this house <laughs> trying to get in. Concern for bad. Concern for bad. All right. Okay. So in. Uh, this is scary. This is scary. So there was this, there were these guys and they were, <laughs> they were deep sea fishing and they were on their way home on an airplane from a deep sea fishing trip. And the pilot goes like, I don't feel so good. Motherfucker passes out fully unconscious in the cockpit. There's no one to land the plane. I have no business on a plane with one pilot. You better get me two pilots or I will not step foot. Hell yeah. Never, ever, ever. You know what? I think that's a really healthy boundary. But this is an incredible story because these guys that were flying, one of them stepped up to the plate. Yeah. So the the pilot faints in the cockpit in mm. the chair and they start nose diving into the ocean. They're over the ocean. And there's a guy on board whose wife is at home pregnant with their first child. Mm. And he steps up and he says, well, we have to do something. So first, noticing that they're nose diving for the ocean, he pulls up on the controls he and at an very angle, gently. very gently, very slowly. And then he tries to put the headset on to talk to control. The headset's broken. He goes to his buddy. He's like, would you please go calmly retrieve your headset so that I can discuss things <laughs> with air control? How is this man so knowledgeable, though? Because he's like, I know that this if I would have pulled this up, if I would have pulled the plane up too fast, it would have stalled. And then our wings probably would have snapped yeah. or something. I'm like. How it's do you like, know this? bitch, how do you know so much about physics, you sneaky fuck? <laughs> and then it's like, literally, the person who's interviewing him is like, how do you know that? He's like, it's just common sense, I guess. It's like, no, bitch. No, it's if not. it was up to common sense, we'd be dead. <laughs> 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 so I just thought that that was so funny when he's like, I guess it's just common sense. But I was like, it's really not. <laughs> what I loved about this interview, though, is he's like, well, were you scared? Like, you have your wife at home. And he's like, not for one second did dying cross my mind. Yeah. He was like, I'm just finding a solution. And I don't know how a nosediving plane could not make you think of death 
Yeah, I mean, I do get it, though. In some instances, your first, the first thing that your brain does is like, how do I problem solve this? You know what I mean? Yeah, and adrenaline probably kicks in as well. Yeah, and I, you know, I'm rewatching The Walking Dead, and the <laughs> the doctor man before he dies keeps being like, "Don't panic." Oh, so now you're giving spoilers? It's been out for 20 years. Who cares? <laughs> it's been out for 20 years. Also, how did he know how to break when he or like slow down to the right speed to then be able to hit the brakes when he landed? Like. I think the guy was coaching him. I know, but I would not. Somebody could be like, okay, here's the break on the plane. And I'd be like, what? I'd be like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And then he's like, yeah, I, I got a hang of the brakes once I was landing. And I was like, did you just want me to pull it in for you? And they're like, no, just stop. He's like, I'm going to pull it in for you. <laughs> <laughs> I could pull up to the tarmac or what's it called? The gate? I don't know. Whatever. He was a classy guy. That's an incredible story. <laughs> that is an incredible story. Good for him. I died just common sense, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> or maybe I just have none. Same. Hmm. Cute. And then uh, Jennifer Coolidge had to call the police because there was a trespasser at her house and he might still be at large and his name might rhyme with <laughs> Schmilin Schmadams. You are so mean. Would it not be you? No, I know how that feels. And you were still down to cross that fucking gate last week? Jump over the gate and go see Britney's house? I was going to do a hot girl walk in a neighborhood. That's very different than jumping somebody's actual... I mean... Like, it's very different, like, a gate to somebody's home versus a gated community. Right. You know what I'm talking about? Right. So I guess... <laughs> Your mom's like, no. <laughs> no, machuous <laughs> act. You would have hopped the fence with him and you know it. <sighs> Absolutely. Well, I know something fun the two of us can do today. I was shocked that you did it, though. And actually, I was scared. I saw, oh, God, he's really going to go. Well, I would have, but your daughter was just so Which abort, I abort, was abort. So great. You raised such a wonderful woman. A friend <sighs> helping a friend stay out of trouble. <laughs> I am and that's a what hero. We are, an everyday hero. People Magazine should write an article about me. Just that actually, common sense. That actually <laughs> gave me the idea for our. <laughs> just common <sense. laughs> Great callback, Mom. Let's Thank do you. a little yellow button. That was anymore. really good. <laughs> Oh, you can't hear what's happening. There's if, a whole crowd cheering in our headphones. For There's you. a sound effect. I'm hearing them if, all the time. I have tinnitus. If, <laughs> <laughs> that's one. Why do you think I'm so happy? This bitch is on fire. I wish we had a camera on her. And I'm sorry. I was scared. You're so mean. I wanted to protect her anonymity. Why? You thought I was going to start asking nasty questions like, no. does she like your husband? No, your mom said your, <laughs> your mom said that someone was nasty to her at a Sam's Club after she started tearing up in your vlogs. And if, I, if anyone's nasty to my mom, oh. I'm going to jail for fucking murder well no i think it was in the comments like somebody made a comment about my mom's hair no, and your mom like haunted her forever someone came up to your mom in sam's club and said that to her no i swear to god your mom said it on our podcast am i wrong chris you were I there you remember. filmed it so yeah Cat sure yes yes sure <laughs> yeah anyway i'm not trying to get my mom in that position okay i'm not scared <laughs> she'll take them uh, my mom does have a concealed carry <laughs> so if you come up on her You've been warned. And lots of rage. <laughs> lots of rage. What? I wonder where it came from. How, this apple does not fall far from that tree. Right on. <laughs> um, that also, I, my idea for our next film is predicated we on you breaking We need to figure out the first film. I am going to put in, I got really good notes back from someone else about it. And then I had a meeting last week with another person who's going to connect me with a guy who packages movies and gets finance. Okay. Did you edit the sizzle? No. Because I'm ready to Because we went to the mall for control. five hours and spent 3000 You should edit the sizzle, but it's got to be 30 seconds. Well, I'm, no, I said I'm ready to start taking control over my destiny. Oh, you, you mean, know? You, and that means I do a lot of work. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, the movie thing has always been your lane. That's I'm ready true. to help your assist in that. Next week, when I'm motherless, we can do that. But like, I am starting to like, you know, manifest a little more of, yeah. like I'm in California, who like, who knows for how long, but I need to start like making shit of myself. Yeah. Because I know like, I'm made a good career for myself but i don't want it to end here yeah and like ryan seacrest leaving live with kelly and yes. ryan What's up with that? we need what a show a like that yes <laughs> you are that now show. it's replaced though with her husband her husband kelly ripa's replacing ryan ryan seacrest yeah. with her husband he on is show. great well you know she got uh co-host approval rights when the whole thing went down with michael yeah, strahan she has good taste and then she uh, she left after they like blindsided her for, after working at the network forever and mm -hmm. she was like well I'm not showing up to work until you guys renegotiate my contract and give me like the due diligence of somebody who has held the top rated morning show for years on your network mm -hmm. <sighs> good model god yeah. I love Kelly Ripa me too me too and him
Which one? Ryan her husband. or her husband? Yeah, well, I can't I wait to see. It's it, the dynamics will be interesting though because it's like yeah, working together. Yeah, the, which like, is hard. You'll walk into they'll walk into work every day and the whole staff will know if there's an issue, or, but right. you know cuz like you can feel tension like that. Yeah. So, and it's an everyday thing. So, mm. I know I'll I be used to work in. with my husband. <laughs> <laughs> He's dead now. To- no, I'm kidding. He's Actually- not. <laughs> He's not dead. I'm just kidding. <gasps> I actually work with two of the three of them. Yeah. <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> One of them is actually dead, just for the record. Okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> here's a Ryland segue. Margot Robbie was talking about the... F- so they announced that... Uh, I just want to call her Glenda the Good Witch. What's her name? Lady Gaga. Yeah. <laughs> Lady Gaga... <laughs> is going to play Harley Quinn in the new Joker with Joaquin Phoenix. I saw they like right. released the steel. Yeah. I'm not trying to like hate on Lady Gaga, but doesn't she do the same thing in every acting role? Or no, maybe she doesn't. I don't know. I didn't watch any of them. I think she did something a little different in House of Gucci, but I never saw it. I, well, I did watch A Star is Born. I really liked her in A Star is Born. House of Gucci, I couldn't get through. And no. I thought I'd be like all over that story. Mm-hmm. Um, but it wasn't Lady Gaga's fault. No. Um, so she took she's taking over the role for Margot? No, it's so it's like, you know, different people play Batman all the time, different universes, different people making different movies. Right. So she is going to be playing the role of Harley Quinn in the Joaquin Phoenix Joker world. Well, and I thought, hmm, weird. Why didn't they call Margot back? But then I saw it's a musical version and then it all makes sense. It's a musical? That's what I saw. Wow, I didn't even jump that far into it. But I do love that Margot Robbie said that she's super inspired by and lit by playing roles that are so iconic that multiple like A-listers can put their own twist and spin on it. And she likened it to Batman and Queen Elizabeth, who everyone's played, and like all of these different roles. And when you look at Margot Robbie's roster, like she's played a lot of those roles that have been played by multiple people. Like she's played Queen Elizabeth. But I really loved the girl power behind the support in, you know, I have an iconic position in this world and I would love to see another icon make theirs iconic as well. Right. Because if you think about it, like all the Batmans, like they're, they stand out, you know, everybody is known for their specific rendition of Batman, whether it's hated or loved. Mm-hmm. Haven't seen any of them. Oh my God. So also I'm just the like the James mm-hmm. Bond. I tried to watch the other day, the Batman with Jack Nicholson and it's fucking weird it's like a noir (laughs) world it's like way too grandiose like i was like turn this the fuck off for him like i was trying to watch the fucking like danny devito is the penguin like (laughs) give me fucking jim carrey is the joker like i'm not trying to play these he because he plays jack nicholson plays the joker i think Uh, but it was like way more like i think it's way more tied to the comic books because it's like straight up mafia mobster vibes and it was just i'm not a, i'm not a mafia mobster noir vibe type of bitch like unless right. it's some like it hot i'm not here for that i want to take back my shit talking of lady gaga oh from earlier in this episode yeah take it back i, I just want to take it oh no i just wanted to say like i'm doing exactly i'm like hating on her for having success in multiple arenas and i love that like yes she hit like a pinnacle of being a pop star and then she was like i'm not going to be held in this box and i'm going to demand the world sees me in a different light and proved herself and then won an oscar for it so i think it's incredible what she's been able to do and it's not easy like if you hit any level of success that doesn't mean it's easy to pivot to a different lane or even maintain the level of success in the field you started in Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people have hit TV shows where it's like the number one show on television and don't get another show. So like good on Lady Gaga. Absolutely. All right. Just wanted to clear it up. And I, I stand with everything you just said and I don't like her. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. There's just things that she does sometimes where I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake, bitch. Okay. I, I like can't you... care about Megan Fox anymore. I like can't do it. I can't either. But apparently she came, she came back, back and she's like, Instagram, it's not cheating. And it's like, girl. Well, so I read a little further into it and she's like, I guess because everyone was speculating Machine Gun Kelly was hooking up with With his his guitarist guitarist, and then the guitarist was getting all this hate. So Machine Gun probably went to Megan and was like, you've got to like stop, like speak out. So this hate stops happening because she was like, stop harassing the other people in this. There is no cheating involved. And I'm like, you're the one that made everyone thinking thought you're the one that made everyone think there was cheating involved because you did these dramatic posts on Instagram, deleted all your photos with him and then deleted your Instagram. It's like, girl, we're all thinking this because of your actions. You can't just like say, whoa, 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 whoa. Her actions 
while she must own them are a direct response of him being sleazy McSleezer sign. And that's fine. But like she's do like the way she like, okay, if Shane did something that bothered me horribly yeah there's no way that i would immediately go to social media start burning shit that he gave me delete all our photos to get like i would really work well we don't know out. what machine gun kelly did i know but it's like she was acting and listen i've been there before where you like act out online in a state of just like like you panic, can't believe rage. not even panic you're just so disbelieved by what's going on like you're like how can the world not see what's going on? This is crazy. Mm -hmm. But it is like, these are adults and they probably should like pump the brakes, pump the brakes. Like people are responding the way they are because of what she put out into the world. Mm -hmm. And I vote like the last few weeks I've been like, I'm on her side. Yeah. I'm on her side. I'm on nobody. Like I still, I still root for her, but it's like, I don't know. I think this is all. Just I mean, because... I think it was a necessary thing to protect the guitarist Sophie Right. And I think it is I think it probably took a lot of courage for her to come back and post that and she probably I feel like she had to be in a big headed space to do it because I would have never done that. I would have I wouldn't have come back. Like I get deleting your Instagram to stop yourself from being a crazy person on Instagram. Right. But no matter what, I'm just like <sighs> But they're still saying they're together? They're saying they're not not together. Okay. See, so, and Sophie followed me on Instagram. Wait, what? So Chris is the other woman. Sophie followed me on Instagram, and I kind of freaked out. Why did she follow you on Instagram? <laughs> I don't know, but she did. How did you follow her? her? I followed her back the second she did. Oh, so Wait, she followed why? you first? Yes. Why did she, she watch do the that? Jane Dawson podcast? I don't know, but I freaked out. Where did you? Where? What's your connection? I have no connection. Yes, you do. Open oh, it. <laughs> what do you mean? Open your Instagram. I'm oh. like, I don't think it's fair that sh this Sophie girl was the one getting attacked. I can't see that far. Uh, uh, but it's just like... It over. I'm going through your nudes, too. I, it's just like a... I don't... Uh, what are you doing? Why are we looking at this right now? <laughs> what, are, what are you... What, Lizzie, we're on air. I know we're on air, but I want to see Chris's connection to Sophie. <laughs> we don't... We'll do this after the podcast. No, this is relevant on air. This is the most interesting thing about the whole fucking story that Sophie Your mom agrees. Follow. Your mom's doing the same thing I'm doing. Okay, well, sound off in the comments below if you're fucking curious why Sophie's following Chris, because I'm fucking curious. Did she And DM nothing you? else here matters. No. Well, we just don't. I mean, no one cares. Lizzie, no, I care. <laughs> no, but... that's no one cares. <laughs> I'm happy for you, Chris. Oh, you looking you. at the the page just saying following you isn't going to get to the bottom of no, why she's No, it's going to see the him. connection of how she knows to follow Chris at all. How would you find that? Because if it's somebody that's posted him, like one of his clients or something. Because she's an Instagram person herself, right? That's how Machine Gun Kelly found her. She's uh, a personality. Yeah, she's a video creator. Okay, yeah. I'm so sorry I did Chris. that to you. I'm triggered by when sometimes you look at your phone and you try to find something for four minutes and then I'm having to edit out three minutes of dead air. <laughs> oh my God. You're not going to forgive my apology? Oh my God. No, and the people won't either. Sound off in the comments below <laughs> if you want to know because we'll never know. Wow. <laughs> As Kanye said, I guess we'll never know. <laughs> well, I said I'm genuinely sorry. And we're still never going to know. <laughs> And just to be completely honest, sometimes the apology is not for the receiver. Okay. I understand uh, how this, well, I don't understand because I'm not living behind closed doors in their relationship, but I just think they need to pump the brakes on acting socially before they figure out how they're going to deal with their relationship. Yeah, dude, that could be a universal truth for everyone. Pump the brakes on social media before you figure out what the fuck's going on in your relationship. Okay. I like it. Yeah. We can unite on that. <laughs> I don't know. Mom, get your things. <laughs> also nice segue your to oh, sorry. the movie Vengeance we saw. Oh. Vengeance. Hold on. Someone's at Ryland's door. Hope we don't have to edit this out. Oh. <laughs> Ryland's on the phone. God. Take that phone from Who me. Mom, do you want to give a review of Vengeance? Or it's are you the done? guy picking up the porta potty Sorry. Oh. <laughs> sure, I hope I'll so. give a review of it. Did you guys just... Will you bring the mic, mic a little closer to your mouth? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I liked it. We saw the movie Vengeance written, <laughs> <That's so weird. laughs> written and directed by BJ Novak, and mom liked it. She liked and it. And Lizzie liked parts of it. You I also slept, slept through, through a majority of, of that film. <laughs> <laughs> liked it, though. I just wish we could make up. We're still friends. Your mom agreed with me, BTW. I don't know if she understood what was going on, <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> She's not on the gram. I know, but when we're just stalling, doing nothing, it's like, pick it up, right? Like, acknowledge? <laughs> okay, whatever. We're moving on. Some of us are moving on. Hmm. Some of us will never move on. Some of us will never forget. Uh, oh. Oh. What? Just her, I think we, we don't need to harp on it. I was reading what her response was. Got it. 
And then this next one, mom, you can weigh in on this because we saw the Alison Brie Dave Franco romantic comedy called Somebody I Used to Know. And it was written by the married couple. And I thought of us. By the married couple. Dave Franco. Oh, them together. They're okay. married. Yeah, right. And Alison they, Brie. And Alison Brie. And they wrote it. They wrote it together. She starred in it and he directed it. So, and they decided upon who to cast as her lead opposite yeah. together. Who was yeah. the man? I don't know his name. Did they have good chemistry? But he was they great. did. He was great. Everybody was. Be- I honestly only know Allison Brie's name. And so, <laughs> her Alice. The story is Allison Brie says it's not that weird having husband Dave Franco co-direct her sex scenes. Yeah. So what's going on here is it's a romantic comedy. So no matter what, her character is going to be fucking someone, right. kissing someone, and romantically inclined with someone. And you know they wrote it together, so they know what all of those scenes entail. And uh, Dave's directing it. So it's like you would think it's super weird to have your husband in the room being like, grab her there. Well, and they said, like in the interview, she was like, the priority (laughs) is the relationship that people are watching on screen because I'm an actor and that's my job. But I'm sitting back here and I'm Dave Franco and I'm like, well, if he gets a boner, then I'm going to get like rage angry. I'm going to have to beat the shit out of him. Rush him. (laughs) Yeah. Because it's like, you know, but then if I'm the actor, I'm the one getting the boner and I'm like, Dave Franco's here while I have a boner for his wife. (laughs) And if anyone were to get a boner, it would be Ryland because he scares himself hard all the time. (laughs) And another quote of hers, she said, it's like we work in this strange job that requires ultimate vulnerability and at a moment's notice it's what we signed up for and i'm like well if you're being that vulnerable with another person like what if there's a genuine connection that is undeniable it's just like scary business and it is why i think a lot of actors end up together like co-stars yeah because the faux chemistry turns to real chemistry and i do think that there's something to be said about like so like true vulnerability is different right behind closed doors no cameras around no script no character vulnerability with a partner is different than on set vulnerability but i think even if the wording is different you're still bringing it from a very personal yeah, and personal I, place and i think a lot of people get confused but like brad pitt and angelina are divorced <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah like it is i mean a lot of my friends that are actors they're like a lot of movies good or bad feels like summer camp because yeah. you like get thrown in to the wild with these people where you're with them for 12 hours a day for three months on end and it's like you're you learn everything about their life and then the movie ends and everyone's on to their next project so you likely don't see them for another few mm-hmm. years and it is like you build these hyper um unrealistic intense. intense relationships with people that might work out in the long run but also might not mm-hmm. so it's just like a testament to their relationship to be able to be confident in them kissing mm-hmm. i agree if i signed up to be an actor i think like uh, yeah there's going to be kissing involved and shane has to be cool with it i know mm-hmm. you have a little bit of an opposite standpoint well it's it's kind of funny because like joe and i did a bunch of sketches a few years back and we just kept hiring my friend alex to play this male part and i was playing the, the girl parts and every character had to kiss so then it turned out that I would just text Alex and be like, or Joe would like text Alex and be like, hey, can you come kiss my wife on camera again? Uh. <laughs> like, but it was, it's never weird. Like Alex has a wife outside of it. It's like, right. you know, it's also, they weren't super vulnerable moments because they were like montage moments where. Well, speaking of kisses, did you see the fake kiss in you people on Netflix? I did so I, I heard so the there's a movie called you people written by Jonah Hill and someone else starring Jonah Hill and like Eddie Murphy's in it and it's about a mixed race couple who are getting together and the white family meet, blending with the black family is it's a bumpy meshing as my mom would say but I see them kissing a lot in the movie so I wonder why they decided for like because I didn't see the movie I had no idea what it was about but it kept coming across in like headlines that the scene was fake and so I started watching like out of context of the movie just people talking about the antics of the scene being fake but it seems like that scene is like the pinnacle of the Mm -hmm. movie like all roads lead to this scene Mm -hmm. predictable so it seems weird that if for that scene they didn't execute on the kiss if they had in other parts of the movie because I only watched the movie to get to the scene of the fake kiss my friend was texting me about it and she was tripping and i put it on it's like well these motherfuckers are like smooch kissing while they brush their teeth so there's other real kisses that's what yeah and so i'm just like i'm confused by there being a seat like i wonder if there was like a covid scare or something i don't know but it's even harder for me to believe that this woman's interested in jonah hill because his charm to me is a little bit rested in the movie In, in at this chapter of his life i feel like he's coming across as a different kind of character 
Well, I haven't seen anything of him recently. It's- I think he used to be like incredibly soft and sweet and funny and charming and vulnerable. And well, I now- think Hollywood and- got the best of him. People constantly commenting about his body. People constantly yeah. commenting about how he- their idea of who he should be. Yeah. I think in a similar way, I know he really doesn't like people talking about his body, but mm-hmm. like Rebel Wilson also just came out and mm-hmm. said like, well, I didn't lose weight for years and years and years because it was in my, like in our contracts, you have to stay within a 10 pound range yeah. of where you were for that movie and it was like multiple movies of pitch perfect i saw everyone taking that headline so out of context like it was like hollywood really being damaging to her and she's like when she actually said it it was like on call her daddy and Mm -hmm. she's like it's very standard like i signed up it's not because they like wanted her to stay fat it's because they wanted her to stay the character they hired her as and she didn't seem to have like a huge chip on her shoulder about it but the media took it and spun it like that yeah i'm sure she would have preferred that she could have gotten healthier when she wanted to whatever that meant like food body Mm -hmm. whatever but i feel like I bet Jonah Hill's charm has also dwindled with the weight of the public. Mm-hmm. Just Oh, I'm I'm sure too, but I also think he's an incredible actor and I it was an interesting choice for him to make a rom com at this point. Right. I mean I so he did write it. He like wanted yeah. to make he executed yeah. on making this. I just thought it was so funny that they're like faces mesh together. So you see the CGI? Yeah. Well, yeah, I watched like a I watched a special effects channel talking about it. And oh, wow. it was like nerdy stuff. Yeah. Dork. Nerdy stuff. <laughs> Nerdy stuff. Anyway, what the fuck is going on with Kendall Jenner and Bad Bunny? And why is the internet so mad at Kendall always? Can I just make a confession? What? I don't think I know who Bad Bunny is. I don't either. He's a rapper, I think. He's right? like one of the biggest artists in the world right now. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I just saw all these headlines and everyone was nasty about Kendall Jenner. You... And it's like... What are they being nasty about? Just that sh- they're like... They're so mad that like somebody of Bad Bunny's status would stoop low to Kendall Jenner. I'm like, Kendall Jenner is like a world renowned model yeah, she who might has not... done very well for herself. Like, she's not not a catch. I don't know yeah. why the internet gets so mad at these girls for everything. I don't either. It's crazy. It is crazy. I don't know Bad Bunny, but I have seen the internet getting mad at Kendall Jenner thinking that she's editing her photos because her fingers look elongated in a bunch of things but then somebody took the time to like find a bunch of pictures of her hands elongated They're like that's just kendall's hands she has freak hands and it's also probably why she struggles to cut a cucumber <laughs> she has beautiful hands she has she's built different i paint i painted her hands they are oh beautiful. no wait, kendall jenner's hands yeah wait well not her physical hands but i've copied her my mom's oh. painted kendall jenner mom painted kendall jenner and then showed it to me she's like look i painted kourtney kardashian I destroyed I'm gonna the need painting, some of though. these. I didn't know you were a painter. Yeah, yes. she's a brilliant painter. So are you and James like painting together? No. No. <laughs> Drama. Yeah. But like we have talked about art together. Yeah. They're independent painters. Well, obviously. If you'd like to commission a piece for my mother, we'll have to broker the deal. Okay. I'm interested. I get a cut of your commission. You get all of it. Do you have and an Etsy shop? My blood. Can people my buy your paintings? Can they commission my no. paintings? Are not for sale. My mom likes to just paint, and she doesn't like to have a professional it's your meditation. pressure. It's uh, like your version of meditating, or you just love it. I just love it. Here, I'll show you one of her works. Okay. Oh, Shane um, might like this actually. Mom, do you still have the pig? I do. I still have all of them. They're not. Oh for my sale. gosh! Yeah, it's not really for good. sale. It's really good. They're not for sale. They're not for sale. Okay. They're, they're mainly not for sale because I just like having them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, they're beautiful. Thank mm-hmm. you. And I can have jellies made of them for $35. It's a jelly. So if you wanted a jelly of any of my paintings, I would I would give you that as a gift. And okay. you don't get to know what a jelly is. I, know you, I owe you, you a wedding gift. I owe her a wedding gift. How so, funny. <laughs> if you want one, I will give you one. Okay. I, when you my get pleasure. home, will you send me a video of your catalog? Sure. Thank you. Um... Okay, I think, should we get into this one, do one advice question before we leave? Oh, you don't want to talk about the Titanic? Well, if you do. Did you read the article? I tried. It didn't catch my interest. Or maybe I just didn't understand. Or maybe my morning was hectic and I had 20 people ringing my doorbell. I think your morning was hectic because this is so gnarly. So there's a Titanic anniversary that's upon us or something. Mm Because people are talking about Titanic again. April 18. Is that it? I think it's the movie. Is that the movie? So April... April, I think it's like April 27th or something that the Titanic. Why do you we Google know the Titanic all the time? facts about Titanic? Because I love Why the Titanic. Why do we know every bit of trivia? Because I love the Why Titanic. Why does Robin know? 
Because I love the Titanic. Because I had to read you all those books over and over and over. That's all you wanted to hear. Yeah. Aww. I loved the Titanic before there was a movie about it. Wow. When the Titanic sunk? Yeah. Was it, was it the 26th? A- April 15th. April 15th. Yeah, tax was day. Close. What if everyone on that ship, all those rich fucks, were just trying to avoid taxes? <laughs> Because that's what Think about it. Do. That's the conspiracy theory. <laughs> Anywho, while they were filming the Titanic, there was a night on set where some they were like one of the meals they had was like lobster chowder. Mm-hmm. And people start eating the lobster chowder and then they start having a horrible reaction to it. Like they're getting violently ill. Some people are hysterically laughing. Some people are hysterically crying. They all start going to the hospital. James Cameron, Bill Paxton's all fucked up. Someone put PCP a.k.a. angel dust in the fucking lobster chowder Whoa. and poisoned the entire set. Why? Wow. No one to this day knows who or why. And how long did it take the film out of commission? It didn't. They worked later that day. And then I was thinking about it. I was like, fuck, bitch. That is a rough fucking life. You get <laughs> dosed on PCP and you have to go back to work. Wow. Do you know how excited I'd be like, well, guess that's the day they're like, wrong, bitch. This ain't covered by insurance. You're showing up. This movie's $100 million. It's 1995. No breaks. Wow. All gas. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I heard people talking in TikTok lingo in real life for the first time last night, and my mind was just. Who? Well, we went to. It's really fun, actually. It's like an all vegan sushi restaurant, and I'm not vegan, but it's like did you go very with? fun. Shane. Oh, okay. Somebody else had introduced <laughs> me to the restaurant. Danielle. Uh, and I guess it's hmm. like, because Trevor Travis Barker <laughs> lives in Calabasas and he's vegan. Mm-hmm. like, And so now they opened a Crossroads, which is like the world's most famous vegan restaurant. But I guess there's this all, Chris has probably been there because it's in, or maybe you haven't, I but haven't. it's in Agora Hills. And it's uh, right next to that uh, Mexican restaurant that we had talked about before. Anyways, oh. it's, uh, it's really interesting and really good. Definitely not like healthy because it's, <laughs> but it's weird because it's like. It's like all rice and fruit. I don't know. Like, they did have, you have the watermelon ahi? I need to take you there just because it's like such an experience. It's like so crazy that they make like it tastes like sushi and it's so realistic, but it's vegan. Anyways, uh, yeah, these two like younger kids came in and they were like only talking like they like I was watching TikTok and it just uh, I couldn't believe it. Were they talking to you? No, they were talking to each other, but the tables are so close in that oh, yeah. restaurant that I'm just like, what did they say? Drop a line. It, like everything that you could ever. I can't even do it. It's a new dialect. It's a new dialect. Oh my god! And now I feel it's like were they like bet? Do they say bet? Bet. 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 Everything abbreviated. Do they say bet? Is are you guys still saying bet? Are you guys? Who are you? I don't know. I'm just asking. See? Okay, we no, gotta go. No cap. We're not gonna do advice though. No, we're gonna get to it next week. You don't want my mom's advice? Oh shoot! Now you're gonna do that? We've already been going for 101. Yeah. Oh, sorry, mom. <laughs> <laughs> no we problem. In, we could put it into next week's episode. I mean, we could just do it next week. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm so disappointed in you for not letting your mom have a camera on that beautiful face. She weighed in. Next time you're here, though, now that you're comfortable with your mom in the room, mm-hmm. next time she's in town, can she be an actual guest? On I mean, the podcast? it depends if anybody on the internet says anything nasty to my mother and I have to go to jail for murder. <laughs> that's a bummer. So it's not about her. It's about them. It's about them. I don't trust them. All right. I'm, I'm, I know that you can take them on, though, even if they're mean. So next time you're here, you're invited (laughs) to the actual podcast. Thank you. And if you say anything, I'll come back anytime. I'm going to find you. I got a very specific (laughs) set of skills and it includes finding you and killing you. If you do want to enjoy Lizzie and her mom, you can watch her Bachelor recap. That's up tomorrow. And I think we're going to vlog today. Yay. Uh, make sure you're subscribed to her vlog channel following Chris on Instagram and listening to this podcast every week thank you guys so much we love you very much and we'll see you next week goodbye and And that's that's just it it. (sighs) good job mom